Hello again. I am old enough to remember when there was genuine and widespread racial prejudice in Britain. It was a time when people would openly use the most awful language about black people and Asians, and it was no secret that they would not be served in certain pubs. It wasn't necessary to put a sign up saying, sorry, no coloureds. It was simply the case that a black person would wait at the bar and see all the white people being served, and he was simply ignored. This has all faded away now, and one really does not see or hear such things anymore. I honestly cannot remember the last time that I heard anybody use the so-called N-word. It must be, well, at least 20 or 30 years, I would think, apart you know, from young black people using it, uh, reclaiming the word, as you might say. It was a word one commonly heard when white people were together. Not anymore. Things have changed, though, thankfully. And if you want to encounter outright racism today, you will not find it lying about all over the shop, as was once the case. You're going to have to dig around a bit and actively seek it out. Why would one do such a thing? That's another question entirely, of course. But this is how things are now. There is no open, naked and unashamed racial prejudice on display and unearthing it takes a good deal of ingenuity on the part of anti-racists. I say unearthing it, but creating would perhaps be a more accurate way of putting the case. Take the current focus of anti-racism, which is now upon those who like to go and see castles and stately homes or stroll around the British countryside. Both these groups are under the microscope because 99% of them are white, which is an oddity in modern Britain. Why are they all white? Obviously because racial prejudice is operating to prevent black people and Asians from getting involved. A big project is under the way by the University of Leicester's Department of Hate Studies to look into this. I give a link to it in the description to this video. I give a link too to a video on YouTube made by a black guy who has joined the National Trust with the intention of hunting down racism in the properties they run. The film, uh, by look at it, you'll find it fascinating, was made by this fellow walking around the courtyard of a National Trust property using his mobile phone to film everybody there. The people who were all white politely ignored this bizarre behaviour, although he was also filming children, and had they been mine, I would probably have objected to it, but there we are. Because nobody took any notice of his antics, he commented, suddenly, I don't exist. They were being racist, you see, by not taking any particular notice of a black person. The countryside business is even weirder. I do a lot of roaming around the countryside myself and climbing mountains and so on. I'm lucky here to be within walking distance of the highest mountain in southern Britain, which I can see from the kitchen window. I can literally walk to the top of it from uh, here. It is true that both here and in Essex and Surrey, where I also do a lot of walking, 99% of those I encounter are white. That is one thing one notices. The other is that the great majority of these people are by themselves, or at most they are couples. Very occasionally I'll see three people walking together up and down lanes in the countryside or across uh, national parks. Hiking in this country tends to be a solitary pursuit, and usually a quiet one. This is because if you want to see deer or wildlife and so on, as I do, you need to move quietly and not be shouting or playing music on a mobile. I mention this because the only time I ever see larger groups of people hiking are when they tend to be uh, doing things like expeditions for the Duke of Edinburgh to walk and so on. I see them sometimes in Epping Forest and I hear them long before I see them. It's groups of teenagers um, supposed to be orienteering. They make such a frightful racket that I tend to uh, nip off the 
path and gives them a wide berth. Large groups are a very different thing from solitary walkers when you're going around the countryside. And this touches upon how some people create racism. Yesterday I went for a 10 mile hike along a green lane. It's a bridleway which was once a Roman road. I only saw two people on that walk and I nodded to both and wished them good day. At the end of the Roman road is a Roman fort which lies on private land, a farm. There was somebody in the farmyard and I asked if I could walk over his fields, went through the farmyard, past his house to the fields and look at the remains, to which he agreed at once. That is how it is generally in the countryside. One person will be treated well and nobody will raise objections to his presence. What is happening though in the crusade to either uncover or create racism in this environment, depending upon how you look at it, is that large groups of either Muslim women or black people are getting together to visit the countryside. They apparently are too nervous or frightened to go by themselves to do what everybody else does, just get a train uh, somewhere and then walk off into the wild alone. There is a black hiking group called Black Girls Hike, for example, to which I give a link in the description to this video. They may be seen in the thumbnail to the video. These are people who do not wish to visit the countryside in search of solitude and quiet, but rather they engage in communal trips of uh, 20 or 30 people. This causes a problem which has nothing at all to do with skin colour. The farmer who cheerfully gave me permission to walk through his farmyard to view the remains of the Roman fort would probably not have been so keen had there been a coach party of 30 people. This is partly because 30 people traipsing past your house and crossing fields of livestock is likely to create more disturbance than a single person, but also because if you are not careful, you can create a public right of way across your property. If people using a particular route across private land do so for 20 years, crossing it, uh, and they mean they clam their precario, as the legal expression has it, which means without false stealth or permission, then after 20 years it can be registered as a right of way, which is a nuisance if uh, their route to wherever they're going leads past your kitchen window, say. So for this reason, farmers will generally be a little reluctant to let too many people, particularly large groups of people, cross their land in case they're part of an organised trespass or right to roam or trying to create a right of way, for instance. Large groups of people in the countryside are going to face more opposition from landowners and farmers than are single walkers. So a single black person arriving at a farm and asking permission to cross the yard as a shortcut would probably be allowed to do so. If there are 20 or 30 black people, they probably won't. This would be the same with 30 white people, of course, but never in my life have I seen 30 white people walking together through the countryside. And here again, speaking for myself, I mentioned that when I hear a group of um, young people on the Duke of Edinburgh as a walk, Walled expedition coming towards me in Epping Forest, I tend to veer off and avoid them. I've no idea what colour those young people are. They just make so much racket and I go to the forest to be by myself. If I saw a group of 20 or 30 hikers approaching me in a national park or in the countryside, I would almost certainly veer to one side because 30 people make more noise than one person and I'm not particularly sociable or gregarious fellow. So I would give them a wide berth. I can easily see that if 30 young black women were marching across the countryside and they saw an old white guy deliberately avoiding them and taking another route so he didn't have to cross their path, that too could be mistaken for racial prejudice. In short, it's not easy to see what is going on with this focus now on the National Trust and the countryside. One seldom sees black people visiting castles, although there are no barriers to their doing so, and the same applies to national parks and the countryside. 
insisting upon only walking across farmland and moors in a body of 20 or 30 people will create problems, which will no doubt be attributed to racial prejudice. In fact, it is the nature of a large group of people rather than individuals which is likely to create the difficulty rather than the colour of their skin.